We want to move to this story, the story of Mike Heron. He is a father of two, a beloved builder, a trail cutter for the National Park. He's also one of almost 200 people who seemingly vanished in East Tennessee. His family last saw him more than a decade ago. Now they are asking for your help because they don't have closure. 10 News reporter Caitlin Keenahan explains his final moments before he vanished. Caitlin. Each year, more than 14 million people visit these mountains. They see a change of seasons and smoky views, but despite that, nobody has seen Mike Heron, and he's been gone for 14 years. It would definitely be considered a cold case. 14 years, Matt Heron's waited on answers. My mind has gone a hundred different ways. Anytime, of course, with all the hope we have of, of finding them, you know, anytime we hear something, you start to believe it. His brother Andy endures the same. Your mind's just going over so many different things and you have so many different ideas and just so many questions that you just want answered. All this started on August 23rd, 2008, on this road in Happy Valley. Bell Branch is a small, just a really small road, single lane. It borders uh, the National Park. It's sort of back in the corner. So it's, it's really secluded and, and uh, away from everything. At the end, a second home for Mike Heron. He loved fishing, off-roading, and hiking. It was the perfect place. He called me Saturday morning just to, just to kind of let me know he was going to head up over the mountain for the, you know, to, for the weekend. Nothing out of the ordinary. Mike's only plan was to mow. But come Monday morning, nobody had heard from him. I was starting to worry when we were driving up there, just because of the whole fact that we were having to drive up there, it was just odd, you know. Inside the home, nothing was out of place. Inside Mike's unlocked car, his keys and wallet laid on the dash. The mower, not touched. Something was wrong. Blunt County, that was first call, then immediately to the Blunt County Sheriff's Department. And then within probably an hour or two, uh, they had met us over at his house. Uh, we were calling out to his house. I remember it was, it was raining. That was the first problem. If there is any evidence, it could be washed away. One lead, the incident report said an ATV was missing from the property. That's where the old one was parked right there. Investigators thought if they find the four-wheeler, they find Mike. Got everybody together on Tuesday morning very early, and um, that's when we were doing the grid searches and all of that. And Tuesday, I think, you know, around lunchtime is when they had found the four-wheeler. Detectives found the ATV sideways. It was just really oddly placed. Uh, didn't really find a whole lot of evidence, just some tracks. The ATV had keys in the ignition and kill switch off. We grew up riding fours and dirt bikes. Me and my brother did, and my dad and all of us did. And, you know, when you turn something off, you know, that has an ignition switch and a key, you turn it, you turn the key off or it'll drain the battery, you know, the lights and stuff. But since that troubling discovery 14 years ago, nothing we get leads we get tips and we follow up on all them and just you know we we get tips up until like um, a couple months ago we had tips and we followed up on it 14 years these sons have waited thought of a lot of different details but um but i there's no point in going there because there's just it's just unknown we don't believe there's not any scenario that I've ran to believe that he's still be alive. You know, I believe that he's he's dead. But without answers, this wondering continues. No, it's it's hard to believe it's been 14 years. I'm just proud we've all made it through. If you have any tips in Mike Heron's disappearance, please call the Blount County Sheriff's Department. Your information could be the missing piece to this puzzle. On WBIR.com right now, you can learn about hundreds of others reported missing right here in East Tennessee. Back to you guys. Caitlin, thank you.